the one field that I've been really interested in has been ambisonics and and related to that are binaural microphones. Um, I'm sure you guys have a pretty good understanding of like what products are out there. And can, can we talk a little bit about the state of these microphones and if have they, you know, and what, how do they fit into your workflow? So, Absolutely. Yeah. So like ambisonics is only, and especially ambisonics microphones, they're only one part of the equation for spatial audio or 3D audio. So microphones are obviously like hardware products. And as you said before, like you're interested in how they use for capture, but ambisonics as a technology, um, we also use that to, to mix audio or place audio sounds, um, sound sources in a field, and then also use that as a format to transport like 360 audio to different formats too. So people that work in uh, doing, doing sound design for VR, if they're working on a 360 film, they'll be using ambisonics technology, whether that's um, just on the software, like in a computer to do their mixing and then transportation of the mix. Um, but they might also have like a, an ambisonics microphone, like you said. So like these spatialization plugins that we use, they can place things in, in ambisonics, uh, in ambisonics like 360 space. And you can use those for in like a digital audio workstation or a piece of software like Adobe Premiere, um, right through to like game audio kind of tools or Unity even um, FMOD wise, those, those, those types of tools. So when it comes to the state of the art right now with ambisonics, like ambisonics has been around for such a long time and we've not only just the research industry, but now we have like this consumer and creators industries that are kind of latching onto it. We're seeing a little bit more development in the, in the field. So we've had like Sennheiser join in with the Ambio VR mic, which is a first order ambisonics mic. And then we've also had very recently, uh, so Soundfield released a second order ambisonics mic. Um, so that uses more channels of capture to capture a higher resolution of audio in that space. What's and, the difference between first order, second order? How does it rate? Yeah, so rate as in perceptually, or what are the mechanical differences? Because like when it comes to ambisonics, it's it's the okay. resolution, a spatial resolution. Yeah. Is it? Would you okay. compare it to having more camera, like more cameras in a three hundred and sixty yeah. rig? Yeah, it's 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 basically it works all on the principle of uh, dividing the sound field in spherical harmonics. So uh, if you just think about this as as uh, independent basis functions, like so, like the first order, uh, it's mainly like a mono source, uh, omnidirectional source. Then, as you add, add uh, uh, as you add in more and more spherical harmonics, it becomes more and more directional. Um, so, can I understand it as uh, basically the idea that when you have an orchestra playing and you have enough microphones, you can through independent component analysis differentiate different instruments, yeah. and the so same you basically apply here. Yeah, like so the decomposition into different uh, sources, or what? You, yeah, what are you actually decompositioning into? So it's it's mainly spatio-temporal decomposition, right? So uh, you're you're sampling not only in time now, but you're sampling now in space. So that's why, like, the higher the order of ambisonics, higher the order of these microphones, better is your way to, you know, you have so much higher resolution in space that you can do more things. And and just so I can understand, what what does resolution mean in an, in an audio sense? Does that mean you can when you close your eyes and you're listening to uh, a recording from an ambisonic microphone that's let's say like second order you can sp you can close your eyes and point in a more clear direction with from where the sound is coming from <clears throat> yeah i mean that's uh, it's capturing can you capture uh, that particular direction well right so uh, if you see this visisonics has this uh, product of of sound camera it's called right yeah uh, and basically they have like 64 microphones um, and it's um, so like, so it can, they say it can record like very high order, uh, uh, you know, ambisonics uh, content, you know, can like seventh or eighth order. But, but the idea is now they have so many microphones. They also use it for, as, as, as the name suggests, it's a sound camera. You can you can uh, you can use beamforming techniques to capture uh, um, the sound just from a particular direction, and 
just just it just gives in more and more uh, uh, resolution um, so uh, i've been uh, on the sink seabit uh, last was it, or this year and i saw there like a huge array like what like it was 64 maybe 128 microphones they uh, had them like on a on a plane and also on a sphere and the claim was that they can, for example, detect certain noises from kilometers away yes. from factories and figure out what's broken. So this is what <laughs> it's basically used for, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, there are many applications for it. Like, uh, if you have many microphones, uh, it, it just, of course, recording, but then you can do beamforming and uh, do all sorts of applications that you just mentioned. Okay. Well, Fascinating. sounds like, I mean, th that's, on the on the high end of where you can apply a lot of this research um as something that's accessible for content creators today i mean what what is what are the basics that they should be aware of or things that they should at least start to look into to create a better um audio uh, per, you know experience in their in their vr experiences hmm. they kind of need to it depends a lot on what their budget is uh, because as as cost effective and cost efficient as these tools are now, we're going to be talking just about Ambisonic's microphones. Um, they still cost quite a bit of money. I think the the mm. Ambio um, costs at least one and a half grand, maybe up to two. I'm not sure. The last time I checked the price on that was when I was in Australia. Um, and then it kind of goes up from there with the Core Sound Tetra mic, um, and then also the Soundfield mics as well. And then you can you can go right up to spending like as much as you would spend on a car for an eigen mic or even more if you wanted to buy one of these Visasonic ca sound cameras too. But you can also rent them as well. So there's there's ways to get hold, a hold of some of these technologies. So there are comp I, I couldn't tell you any of them um, off the top of my head, but there are some that will rent these some of these microphones too, so that you can experiment or use them on on set to capture. Um, the other approach, of course, is then obviously, like as I mentioned before, kind of doing it in the box. So if you have sound libraries of like mono sound sources that have already been captured, um, there are some sites that also carry like ambisonics of recordings that they take themselves in library form. So wow. you can go and, and buy ambisonics recordings and then you can have your sound libraries of mono sources and then pick an ambisonics panner uh, to actually go and do that mix in the box and then export that out to a VR headset and, and have a listen to it. So there's more than one way to skin a cat in this field. And that's kind of what makes it a really exciting place to be in and to be experimenting in as a content creator. So um, step one is always just research, <laughs> research um, into what, what is applicable for your, your particular workflow on your product and then kind of go from there.